little over a year ago, I publicly discussed being harassed and stalked for nearly a decade by a public figure who, at the time, had just been caught anonymously disparaging their friends, family, and colleagues on a gossip website. Instead of taking accountability for what they had done or bowing out gracefully, said public figure decided to unleash every nasty little detail of my past as a teenaged addict in an attempt to discredit me. Funnily enough, this just added further credence to my allegation of stalking and harassment, and at that point proved to most people this public figure had, in fact, targeted me for all that time. I was even able to dig further into my own personal files and messages and find even more damning evidence to corroborate all that had happened to me. Throughout this whole ordeal, I had multiple commentators coming down on me, mocking me, and just generally trying to troll me into oblivion. People had no idea who I was and just assumed I had the worst intentions in tow because, unfortunately, there have been many stories of similar public figure downfalls that have unveiled other seedy, dishonest players. From that understanding, I simply decided I wasn't going to play the game. I built my whole channel on learning to confront and work through my past, to share what I'd learned through the mistakes that I had personally made, and to share the importance of self-reflection with others. Though at its core, this is an art channel. What is art without meaning, without pain, without joy, without some larger understanding of self. After addiction, your mind takes time to heal, and art was a huge part of that process. And in the end, making art, sharing stories, and being part of a quiet community of kind people was all I ever wanted. After everything that happened surrounding that public figure and myself, initially I felt okay. But as time went on, I was struck suddenly by a delayed reaction to all that had happened. A dark cloud formed over me and swallowed me whole. I isolated myself completely and became fearful of leaving my home. Every car that drove by, every sound at night, I simply didn't feel safe. When someone has nothing left to torment you with, what's the next step? And that's where I struggled, imagining the possible next step. My rational mind knew perfectly well it was very unlikely that someone was going to show up at my house, but the motherly, highly protective side of me understood that although highly unlikely, it was not beyond the realm of possibility, as it has happened to many other unsuspecting people in the past, even some people that I know and that I'm close to. This thought often paralyzed my heart with fear. The world moved on to the next thing, and I stayed stuck, and my mental health completely deteriorated. This is the real-life aftermath of being a stalking victim. It doesn't just go away when people stop talking about it. It exists inside of me always, and even though I was able to work through some of the darker parts, that fear I have will always float thinly on top like a rancid cream. But at the same time, I had to walk with this feeling, look it dead in the eye, and accept it. I don't have to let it consume me, but I have to be okay with this little frightened part of me and accept it as just that, a part of me. And I can also feel this deep sense of healing inside of myself. I feel my confidence and my security slowly starting to return, building themselves back up like muscle fibers becoming stronger and thicker. I can have moments of quiet where my brain can be at peace and not immediately dart to the darkest possibility. I can load my children into the car and not feel extreme guilt for not vetting each car that drives by. There's this silent and slow metamorphosis taking place where I can truly be present and exist in time without constant fear. And when that fear does raise its ugly, stinking head again, I can use those quiet moments of bliss as a shield. I have a lot of hope and a lot of love and a lot of genuine, deep care for this community. And although I have relegated myself to the sidelines for the last few months, I've still made sure to peek in and see everyone's beautiful art and projects and discussions. That wonderful feeling of being a part of a community is one I cherish and hold dear and is another very important gem that has kept me going all this time. So this is why you've really only seen bits and pieces of me recently. It's because I was quietly trying to heal the parts that tend to hide when hurt. And that's okay. One of the most powerful lessons I've come to learn as an artist and as a human being is to be kind to yourself, to allow yourself to feel hurt and to find a way to slow down and to take care. It's never wrong to feel, it's what you do with those feelings that matter. I appreciate the patience and the kindness and the support. 
I can tell a large part of our community empathizes with the act of sharing themselves in bits and pieces sometimes, because they too need time to heal the parts that tend to hide when hurt. The piece I made for this video was inspired by an idea that my five-year-old son, Beanie, had while we were gardening and tending to our many house plants. He's obsessed with all things zombie, Halloween, skeleton, have no idea where he got that obsession from. <clears throat> but anyway, we were potting some propagated house plant clippings and he asked, do you think if we planted someone's spine after they died, then they'd grow another them? And I just stared at him because the idea was based not only in flawless five-year-old logic, but also in flawless plant logic. And I was just so impressed by the profundity of what he had just said. I told him, unfortunately, no, that is not physiologically possible, but it's an absolutely wonderful idea for a really thoughtful painting. And his face just glowed because this was not the first time he has given me wonderfully weird ideas for a painting, and he always feels so special when I pick one of his ideas. So that's why I entitled this piece Start Again or Start Anew because, man, wouldn't that be so neat to just plant people. Okay, that also might be terrifying, but overall a very fun and kind of macabre concept. My boys, or my birds as I affectionately call them, are truly my little muses. Nothing else compares, nothing even comes close to the inspiration that they give me. I'm very lucky to have such wonderfully eloquent, thoughtful, and intelligent little boys. I feel like the luckiest mom in the world. Thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget, to stay out of trouble. See you guys later. You can help support this channel by checking out some of the new products in my merch store. And make sure to keep your eyes peeled for new products for this 2022 holiday season. Thank you.